Welcome to Nerd on Nerd with me, Jack Hempster. And me, Liam Underwood. In this episode, we're going to be discussing The Last American Virgin and, as a bonus treat, Porkies. But before we get to that, it's time for catching up with Jack and Liam. So how are you, Jack? I'm good, Liam. How are you? Uh, good. Busy. Busy with life and whatnot, but are you still are you, like? Are you recovering from, I don't know, being transformed into an android or something? Because you definitely sound robotic when you do our intros. Don't know what you're on about. I, this that's, week, that's we will be talking about the last American mm. virgin. Yeah, professional. Right. Sounds smart, like Stephen Hawking. It doesn't. It doesn't sound smart. What have you been up to this week, Liam? Um, so, regular listeners will know that last time we talked about the first three episodes of Making a Murderer. Yep. I've been watching more of that. I haven't. I haven't finished it yet. I've got one episode to go, but I'm enjoying it a lot. It is very different to what we were anticipating the direction for it to go. But that's oh, really? What, all both I was of us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, oh, more okay. you than me, but yeah. Oh, yeah, well, I was ready for that. Yeah, but um, I would say try and get around to it uh, when you can, just because it, it is it is good. Oh, okay, fair enough. Um, but yeah, that's really the only bit of house cleaning I've got uh, this week. Exciting. Yeah, I mean, otherwise my nights are literally just, at the moment, they're being spent trying to get a movie watched. Maybe I'll go to the cinema, um, because I've been doing that a lot lately, but we'll get there. Um, I've been playing Uncharted 2, which I've been enjoying. I'm trying to get up to date before the fourth comes out. Well, you've been been trying to get through the Uncharted games for a while now. Well, I had a good, like, month or so where I just didn't touch my PlayStation, so I've been trying to get back into it. Um, And then a couple of weekends ago... I picked up Pokemon Alpha Sapphire. So I've been trying to squeeze that in where I can as well. So it's just been non-stop, to be honest, my evenings. You picked up Pokemon uh, Alpha Sapphire and then quickly realised you already owned a Mega Ruby, correct? Yeah, which was one of the best realisations I had because it meant that I could start Alpha Sapphire with all three starter Pokemon. Yeah, but that's just that's cheating. No, it's not. It is. How is that cheating? Because you've given yourself... Th- the whole point of the Pokemon games is you start with one and then your rival picks your weakness. You started with all three and your rival's like, I'm going to have this one. And you're like, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But the whole point of Pokemon games is to trade with your friends. But when you don't have any... Yeah, so you, you also didn't do that. You Exactly, you traded to yourself. But you could e- easily argue the whole point of the Pokemon games is to complete the Pokedex and I'm well on my way to doing that now. <laughs> Whatever. So The thing is, right, the last time... I had friends that played Pokemon. It was you, and I think I had Heart Gold and you had Soul Silver. Yep. And I got to a stage where I had one of the legendary Pokemon. I think it was called Kyogre or something, and that was the one I could get in my game. And then to get another legendary Pokemon called Rayquaza, I needed the legendary from your game. I think Groudon or something. Yep. But you didn't get to that point. No. It wasn't so Groudon. you're you're talking about the wrong Pokemon, aren't you? I don't know, but basically it's Lugia I know is, and Ho Oh. No, 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 no. You're no. talking about Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Yeah, yeah, there were there were legendary. You're talking about the wrong games. You're talking about you're talking about back when we had uh, Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby. No, because we didn't have those at the same time. I'm so confused. You're talking about but trust me. No, okay. trust me. In Heart Gold and Soul Silver, you oh, could, could you get catch extra. other legendaries? Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. I do sort of remember that. Fast. Yeah, so I could get Kyogre. You could get Groudon, and then if you had both of them in your team at the same time, Rayquaza would appear. It's Rayquaza. Rayquaza, whatever. I don't know their bloody names. And that's why I didn't trade you the other legendary. Well, no, you it's don't because deserve you it. didn't get to the point where you caught that legendary because you were yeah. like, oh, I've just given up with the game. So I was like, well, right, well, at least now I can rely on myself. Do you not think that's super depressing? A little bit. <laughs> but I also think it's kind of your fault, so... Ah, whatever. Yeah. So that's what I've been up to. Um, how about yourself? I hear there's been parties and well, frivolous like, activities and one, one much party. merriment. <laughs> <laughs> I went to a party for my friends who are going to Thailand and abandoning me in England. Why aren't you going with them? Because I have a job. No, that's not the right answer. What is, what is the right answer? That is the answer. <laughs> no, because you're loving Nerd on Nerd so much. That oh! You couldn't bear to cause, cause, and we couldn't do stop. that <laughs> overseas. No, we couldn't. That's not how the internet works, Jack. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so I did a bit of partying, went to the pub, went yeah. back, had a few drinks... Did you uh, meet any ladies? Nope. Okay. Did you? I mean, it was a, it was a pub, and it was like my friend's family were all there, so no. Did you get drunk? Uh, I wasn't as bad as I've been before. Did you cry? 
No. Did you not? Because I, I, I kind of pictured you sort of saying a teary goodbye to them. Well, no, see, because this is the group of friends that I've had since primary school. Yeah, exactly. So we've already had the whole, like, we're going to high school and we'll never see each other again. And then, like, all went to the same high school and we're like, oh. And then after high school, we were like, oh, you're going to uni and we'll never see each other again. And then we hung out at uni and, you know, we're generally friends still. So at this point, it's like, you're going to Thailand, but let's be real here. It's not going to change. They might love it out there and move out. Oh, yeah, no, I'm I'm fully... One one of them is, like, I'm planning to be out there for years. Yeah. So I'll just fly out and visit him at some point. Because I think it's... um, Living out there is a lot cheaper than it is is, living here. But equally, I guess, um, when you work out there, I guess you'd get paid less for the same amount of work that you would do here, right? Yeah, but it's it's not as proportional as you're you're assuming there. No, because I I was assuming... Because the jobs that I think that... Especially in Thailand, you, you know, you can get jobs that pay quite a lot yeah if you're a foreigner traveling over there like oh, okay. a couple of my friends went out and did uh english teaching courses that was oh yeah what that's did. supposed to pay quite well and you don't have yeah, to exactly. like know any um tie to teach that either do you nope you you literally just have to know english they do an english test yeah and then that's it you're done so is that not anything that's ever tempted you uh not usually like i'd love to go out and travel and stuff but... yeah but you wouldn't want to like move out there i don't know i could i could see myself doing it but just there's too much you know too many ties here at the moment what ties my family and i have a job that i don't want to exactly just leave to risk traveling and you could meet a nice little tie bride i don't i don't think that has the conversation you think it does what aren't tie brides you the, like the kind of brides that you buy yeah i don't want to buy a wife oh okay am That's... i gonna be shocked on my birthday when you present me a tie bride Mm, I'll send it back. <laughs> it's not a problem. Full refund. Yeah, postage. It'd be fine. Punch some holes in the box. Nice, yeah. Plus, I think if you're going to get any bride, you'd go for a Russian one, surely. I don't think I'd buy a wife. Well, no, I mean, in an ideal world, no. But no, if, I, I, if just you wouldn't, had to, I don't think ever. I don't it, think there's any scenario where I'd be like, I'm going to buy a wife. But if you had to. What do you mean have to? Why would I have to buy a wife? I don't know, just for reasons. You could paint me a situation that I'm in where I need to buy a wife. Um, you you find out right that your nationality is incorrect and you're actually Siberian and you're going to get deported back to Siberia unless you can find a wife whose nationality for some reason doesn't matter. <laughs> right, I was going to say I was like, I wonder when Liam's going to find the flaw in his logic. You find out you find out that you're Russian and the only way England's going <laughs> to let you stay is if you buy a Russian wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be pissed off if I bought her. She came over here expecting like a whatever a, the green card equivalent is. Yeah, and then she and then I'm like, no, I'm Russian too. <laughs> Let's go <laughs> back. <laughs> Maybe she'd like that. I don't think she would. All right, so that's just a scenario. Like, I'm just saying, if you if you had to, would you, would you not pick Russian over Thai? Yeah, I'm, if I had to, but yeah. I, I, it's never going to happen. No, no, no. But I mean, most hypothetical situations aren't. I don't know. Um. So what else have you been up to, Jack? Um, not much, I don't think. Okay. <laughs> so we've both had... I've been editing a podcast. Oh, yeah, because obviously you edited the last episode of Nerd on Nerd. Yeah, so that was the what, first time. Yeah, so when listeners notice that there's a huge increase in audio quality, that's me. Yeah, so um, I guess listeners will probably want you to do all of them from now on then. No, I feel like they won't. Well, I mean, if there's such a big increase in audio quality, then... I think that's the right way to go. No, but really. Liam, if, if someone said to you, Liam, here's a load of money, you can have chocolate every day, and you had chocolate every day, eventually you'd get sick of chocolate, wouldn't you? I don't eat chocolate. Exactly, because you used to eat so much chocolate. I don't want people to get sick of my editing. So I think, you know, it's only right that we continue on with this alternating editing system. Okay. Between me, you, and Editor Brian. Yeah. So Jack. Yeah. One of the things I've been doing a lot, going to the cinema. Too much, some would say. I've seen seven films in the last two weeks at the cinema. That's too much. Is it, though? That's one every other day, so yes. Yeah, but to get the most out of my unlimited card, I need to be going a lot, don't I? Well, yeah, we had this discussion. I think to make it break even, I need to go at least twice a month. So I'm well on track. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're over by a huge margin. Yeah, well, the more I go, the more value I get out of the card, right? You also lose, like, two hours of your life. Yeah, but these are films that I'd probably watch anyway. Like, I'm, are at the they? End of the day, yeah, to be honest. Some of them. Most. Okay. 
You know me, I'll watch anything. <laughs> That's true, yeah. So, so instead of going through all seven of the films, I'm not, not allowed to do that, apparently, because uh, our listeners reckoned... Well, you reckon that our listeners would find that boring. I just... I'll be honest with you. I said that before the podcast. The real reason is I don't want to sit here while you review seven films and I just sit in silence going, yeah. Here's the thing, Jack. I'm a pro host and I'll get you involved in the conversation. Well, let's see if you can do that with three of the films. Okay. First film, Room. Have you seen Room? No. (laughs) Uh, It's not very good involvement, is it? (laughs) That's not on me. (laughs) So, Room, we discussed in our last episode, because Brie Larson, who stars in it, won the Best Supporting Actress Oscar for that movie. Yep. Four out of five. Quite liked it. Well, really liked it, really, with a four worth, out of five worth score. Worth seeing? Um, not necessarily worth seeing at the cinema, um, but it is definitely worth trying to hunt down and check out at some point. I think you'd like it. Okay. So, the next movie that I'm allowed to do is Spotlight, which we also discussed last week because it was the Best Picture Oscar winner. Okay. It was, was fine. Good, yeah. I mean, three out of five. Like, it was fine. Um, I didn't like it as much as I liked Room, but it was one of those movies where it was harmless, you know? It it didn't offend any of my sensibilities. It just passed the time. Okay. I mean, it was about paedophiles. Right. I didn't know that. Yeah, so it's about... Um, the Catholic Church in oh, America. Oh, okay, yeah, no, I do know the, uh, I know the film. Yeah. I know of it. And how their paedophilia is kind of co- covered, and the, the movie is about this um, reporting team that worked for a newspaper called Spotlight, and they try to uncover this massive naughtiness. Yeah. And then the last movie that I'm allowed to talk about is The Witch, which is a horror movie. Uh, came out very recently, this weekend. Went with Cat. Ooh, it was not good, Jack. No. No, you know me. I'm generally pretty lenient with my with my movie scores, right? Like it's rare that I'll hate a movie. Yes. The Witch, one out of five. Boring. That's, yeah. Tedious. If I was watching it at home, I'd have probably turned it off. See, that's 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 the big one. Like, even if you rate a film badly, I feel like like a film can be terrible, but you still sit through to the end, right? Yeah. But there are some films where you're like, you have that sudden realization where you're like, I could stop watching this. Exactly. And, and it I, would mean nothing. I think the worst thing a film can be is boring. Yeah, definitely. And The Witch, it's it's a, like it's a 90 minute movie, but it just really feels it. It's it's There's just no tension, no atmosphere. Um, it's One of the things that I really struggled with it is it starred um, Finch from the UK office. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And it was super hard getting that character out of my head to appreciate <laughs> this like fucking weird oh, ye oldie speaking character oh, okay is it is it an old timey film as well yeah it, it's it's set in like I don't know the 1800s or something um and it's about this family that are trying to like develop their farm and a witch is kind of messing things up for them but even that makes it sound better than it was fair enough <laughs> it was really bad I would not recommend it I probably won't watch it don't I won't you'd be a fool to <laughs> alright so there were other movies I saw. Um, what what you missed is my thoughts on uh, London Has Fallen, Hail Caesar, Secret in Their Eyes, and the Divergent series, Allegiant. So if you wanted to know what I thought about any of those, tell you what, I've put it on Twitter. You can find out there. What Twitter handle, Liam? At Nerd on Nerd. Thank you, there we go. They should know that by now. No, because we get new listeners. Oh, if Hi, you're a new listeners. listener, welcome. And that's I it, hope, that's all we give them. <laughs> I hope uh, you appreciate our next segment, Nerd News. What's new in the world of nerd? Well, Liam, one thing that I found this week, and by this week I mean today, and yep. by today I mean I suddenly realised I needed to find some nerd news, otherwise I'd have nothing. So, Liam, one thing yes. that I found this week yep. is there was a fan film being made for uh, Star Trek called Star Trek Axanar. I think that's pronounced right. I don't know. I don't watch enough of the show to pronounce the things correctly. I mean, it's a made-up word, so can you pronounce it wrong? Yeah, well, because the show would have established how to say it. Mm. But anyway, so they're making this film. They did a Kickstarter, or they're doing a Kickstarter. Some bullshit. But to me already, I'm like, that's a bad idea. Yeah. It's clearly they're going to get in trouble. And Mm. so, like, to the surprise of no one, Paramount Pictures and CBS filed a copyright infringement lawsuit against them. No way. 
Yeah, oh, it's shocking. Yeah. But the fan, the film, the fan guys were like, ah, oh, it's fine. We think they're just bluffing us. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say to them, oh, well, can you give us a list of all the copyright infringement we've done? Thinking that the lawyers, the thinking the lawyers would be like, oh my god, how are we going to do this and let it slide? No, yeah. the lawyers swiftly turned around and gave them a twenty-eight page document listing every copyright infringement from simple things like Vulcan ears to more complex things like the Klingon's home planet and they just went to court with that and were like yep we've done it there we go and then carried on taking them to court so has this been shut down now? I mean I don't know mate but I assume so yeah they they surely would be foolish to carry on doing it yeah exactly yeah the moment you get sued by someone like that I mean the only thing I could think is they could try and like make a different film but it sounds like they're all Star Trek fans who wanted to make a Star Trek film. So, do you feel that, um, like, do you think that sort of fan um, appreciation or what what have you should be allowed in that? I mean, where do we draw the line? Because I guess see, there's fan art, right? No, but this see, is this just is the thing, Lynn, This yeah? is the thing, right? It's not an extension. The fact that they kickstarted it yeah. and were getting money from people. So that's issue. where we draw the yeah, line. Because okay. you can make, you can, I think, you, I think, you know, I don't know the legality behind it, I'm not sure about, but yeah. I'm pretty positive you could make a short film that you didn't get any funding for, you didn't monetize it in any way, and I'm sure it, it might still get pulled if you put it on YouTube and they complain, but I don't think they're going to sue you. Yeah. You know, I think they'll give you a copyright infringement so you can't do that, take it down. But I think the fact that these guys were making money off it. That's the yeah, issue. I agree. I, I think once you start trying to make money from something that is basically someone else's property, yeah, that that is naughty. Like even if, even if they weren't taking any of the money back as profit, even if that money was just going into making the film, yeah, that's still an issue because people are giving money to you. Yeah, exactly. To make it effectively, definitely. Well, hopefully, um, they'll have learned their lesson. Yeah, that's a warning to our listeners. Like, but equally, don't I go guess... out and make a nerd on nerd podcast that's similar to this one. We'll get you. I guess the flip side of it is we now won't ever get to see what that movie is and it, it could have been a potentially great movie. Yeah, but then we've got like Star Trek being No, of course, but I stuff. mean I'm alright yeah, with that. What I'm saying I'll is settle. is it's you've got to look at it also as the flip side where it's kind of a shame that we're see, not getting I, more I, that's that could be great. It no, could but be I, awful. I don't think so cuz they'd be making so like even without any of the like copyright and stuff they may they'd be making a film set in someone else's universe yeah so like even if the story was good there's still an element of sort of lazy writing in the fact that they're taking someone else's universe and they're like we're going to make our own fan film about it like and, and that's not me disrespecting people that do like fan stories and stuff yeah again i think it comes down to the money thing like they were trying to make something but getting money for it i don't know it just I don't know, man. I don't think we're going to miss out. It wouldn't have been canonized because no one's going to turn around and of go. Of course, that's part of the universe. So then it doesn't matter. Like if yeah. you like Star Trek and you watch that film, you can't then go to all your Star Trek mates and go, "Yes, but in the movie Star Trek, Anna, blah blah." I've yeah, no. But I mean, it, it would be weird if that was your sole reason for watching a film. But like, surely if you were just a big fan of Star Trek, you could watch that film, kind of understand it was a fan appreciation attempt, and be like, well. I really enjoyed those two hours I spent watching it. I had a great time. It's not canon or yeah, anything, no, but you, it was a fun experience for me. You, yeah, you can, but then it, it. You say you know it doesn't matter if it's not canon, but it kind of does. Like I know that that's not the reason we go and watch the new Star Wars films. Like yeah. I didn't go and see the new one, being like I just need to know more. Yeah, but part of it is the fact that you go. I know that this is the story of Luke and Leia carrying on. If someone released a fan film that had Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, and Princess Leia in it, I wouldn't watch it and go, oh, what a great movie. Like, oh, I'm so glad that I saw that Star Wars thing. I might be like, it was a good film. They tried. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. If it was genuinely good, equally, I guess this is the other risk, though. If it is genuinely good, let's say someone made a a fan film of of Star Wars, like they did their own Episode Seven, and it was amazing. It was better than what we actually got. There'd be that little kind of, tinge of disappointment then wouldn't there you'd be like well it's a shame that it couldn't have been as good as this fan film uh, I don't know I don't know I don't know if I agree with you on that one well it's not often that we disagree no 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 we're, we're always on the same page yeah pretty much so what what news have you got for me Liam um, there was a new Marvel Civil War trailer or Captain yes. America Civil War I guess yeah I'm um, still not sure about that but yep we finally get to see Spider-Man 
Yeah. Which is kind of really the only big deal about that trailer, in my opinion. So, what did you think of the Spider-Man costume? Yeah, the costume, I thought, was a little bit too um, primary colours. Yeah, it's it's it seems too bright, right? And it yeah. also, I know that like they CGI Spider-Man. That makes sense, like, yeah. even in the other films. But it almost looks... Too, like, clearly we're going to get other scenes of him in the film. Yeah, you so. So, I don't want to judge it fully based on the one snippet of the trailer. But it looks a little bit too CGI. Yeah, as a, as a reveal, I was a little bit underwhelmed by it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like it was meant to be, because he does the whole, like, oh, hello, or whatever. Like, the sort of deliberately, it's Peter Parker, he's a teenager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... It's all sort of over his head sort of thing. But, like, yeah, yeah. It, it was a weird choice. Definitely. Um, but, I mean, at the end of the day, I didn't need to see that trailer to know that I'm going to the cinema to see the movie. No, exactly, yeah. So, we'll see. I mean, I have hi- I have high hopes that it'll be entertaining. Um, but, I mean, Marvel... <sighs> At the moment, they, I, I still really feel like they need to stop playing things safe. Well, like, yeah, I guess. Do you know, like, when they do something different, it works. So I'm hoping they'll actually nut up and actually push these characters in a real interesting, different well, direction. Well, I mean, from, from that seen. perspective, this is that. Because it's yeah, in, it instead be. of the Marvel everyone's teaming up, this is the Marvel everyone falls out. Yeah, it really should be. And. I want to feel uh, repercussions of this movie going forward. Well, other it, films. It, is it the is it the end of um, what's his face's contract, Robert Downey Jr.? I don't know, but because wasn't that like the big thing? It was his contract was ending, and everyone assumed this would be the death of Iron Man. Yeah, I on a personal level, I would be disappointed if this was the last we saw of Robert Downey Jr. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. He's he is he's become in the like you know public eye. He is. The embodiment yes. of Iron Man and Tony Stark. And well, I was having this conversation with Kat recently, and we uh, disagreed a little bit. Um, I was saying I would love to see Robert Downey Jr. tackle the Demon in a Bottle Iron Man storyline. Yeah, well, he did a little bit. Uh, not enough. Like, I think what they've done is they've laid the groundwork to for us to actually really be able to dig into it in a future instalment. Um, like, it wouldn't come out of left field. Um, yeah. But- but Kat's opinion was there's no way they'd get Robert Downey Jr. on board with, obviously, his past to bear yeah, in mind. Yeah. But So there's there's two things I want to say. I want to see that, and I still just... I want to see Iron Man meeting Rocket Raccoon and the dialogue that would ensue from that. I mean, that that bit, not so interesting to me. I, like, I'm, it, I'm sure it'd be funny. I don't think it'd be... It's, I don't think it's a reason they should keep him on... You know, that's not the main reason. I hope they're not sitting there going... We really want to write him meeting Rocket Raccoon, though. <laughs> Wouldn't that be dope? <laughs> like, it would be good, but I'd, I'd really hope that isn't a reason that they consider how they're doing stuff. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, this is just what I want to see before I know, they I know. can him, you know? But equally, this, this is my other issue, is if they do kill anyone in Civil War, it's not going to have the impact that they think it will have, because my reaction would just be, I wonder when they'll bring him back. No, but you say that, but the Marvel movie universe hasn't done... We've had this discussion before, yeah, and we have. you don't agree with me, but I don't no. I don't think... Cause I, I looked I, it up afterwards, and there was like 15 cases where people died and were brought back. Yeah, but lo- so many of them were like minor characters who died in or were brought back but for TV shows and shit. It's still... It's not been up. a main character. <sighs> it's debatable. No, because the Iron Man scene wasn't him dying in Avengers. I mean, it was on the list. Yeah, I know, and it was ridiculous. Like it legit, like in all seriousness, it isn't a death. You don't ever see him die. It wasn't like because the way Marvel, like the way comic books do it, is a character is literally killed off, yes. and then some mystical thing brings him back. But Iron Man's one was everyone just goes, "Oh, he must be dead because he's gone through the portal with a nuke," and he. Th- but it turns out the portal hasn't closed fully, and he comes back through, and you're like, "That's not an actual death." Scene. Yeah, that's not him dying. There's, there's then yeah. him once he hits the ground, he's like dead until Hulk roars at him that's, and that's not what death him I, don't think, I don't think that was him being dead Liam it was not clear it was probably him be- I think well I think the logical part of your brain should have gone if something roaring at him brings him back he was probably knocked unconscious as opposed to dead because I don't know if you've seen in the world Liam but when you go to hospital and people are like on their deathbeds they don't go we only have one treatment for him and that is uh, we're going to scream really loudly in his face 
and hope that he comes back to us. Right, I'm going to blow your mind here, Jack, but I'm not a doctor, so I don't know. <laughs> you should know how the world works. You, it's because you've seen seven movies. Your, brain's does, your brain doesn't work right anymore. No, it, it's... Not, what do you mean, anymore? <laughs> fair point, fair point. Um, my next bit of nerd news, transitioning beautifully there. Um, Final Fantasy XV, the release date, when they're going to announce the release date of that game, now has a release date. <laughs> Yeah, that's ridiculous. So on March the 30th, we're going to find out when Final Fantasy XV is released. Now, this is one of the few RPGs that I'm actually really excited for. Uh, I haven't played a Final Fantasy game since Final Fantasy VIII. And I, I was a big fan of both VIII and Seven. I spent a lot of hours in my childhood playing them. So I'm excited to jump back into that universe. Yeah. But, and this is things that movies do sometimes. Movies will do a little trailer to announce when the, the big trailer is going to come out. I don't like it. No, it's weird. It's just a waste of everyone's time. Yeah, because we, like, no one's looking forward to the trailer. And no one's no. looking forward to the release date of Final Fantasy. Everyone's just looking forward to Final Fantasy. Exactly. So, it just I mean, I'm not, I, I couldn't care less. I'm not going to get it. That's fair enough. I mean, I have some other really big games to be getting through before that, but yeah. I'm excited. So, I'm all on board. That's fair enough. I'm not, yeah, I, I'm not going to begrudge you your Final Fantasy. <laughs> uh, I would hope not. That would be mean. It would be. Yeah. I and mean, that's not what we do on this podcast. No, we're, we're super friendly, happy chaps. Yeah, exactly. A lot of people, I think, feel like, maybe especially after listening to the last episode, that we fall out. But we don't. We just understand that the other person is often wrong. Yeah, exactly. We so- both just We both just go... Oh, okay, man, yeah, I accept your point. And then we both, when we turn off the podcast and Skype, we both just go, what a dickhead. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't know go, what he's talking about. We just go, he's clearly wrong. <laughs> and then we just get on with our lives. Yeah, that, I guess that's the advantage to having the sort of ego where you just assume you're right all the time, is it doesn't really end friendships, because you just assume they're wrong. And, that and you don't right. need to make your point. You're like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, well, that's the other issue, is it's really hard to argue with a stupid person. <laughs> Because they just drag you down to their level and then beat the you with The sad experience. thing is that this is what both of us think about each other. So, yes. like, you're saying this to sort of insult me, but it's also how I feel about you. No, exactly. And I'm aware of that. Yeah. But equally, I also know that I'm right. Yeah, so do I. It's well. good. Um, so that was that for Nerd News. Yeah. We're, we're doing well on for time this week. Um, culture swap. Swap my culture. Swap my culture. So... Hands up, it was my suggestion last week, wasn't it? Yep. I suggested The Last American Virgin. Now, listeners, do bear in mind, um, we're still doing just one thing each for us both to discuss. Yeah, as hard as that is to believe, listening to Liam's culture swaps, where he often (laughs) does three films, (laughs) suggests we do two if we've got time. Yeah, well, you know, so this week the main one was The Last American Virgin for us both to watch. Yep. And then, if we had time, a little bonus treat, Porky's. And I've got good news for you, listeners. We both had time. We did. So, there'll be a little bonus treat after we've discussed The Last American Virgin. Now, I've seen it before. I'm a huge fan of the movie. But Jack, you haven't seen it, so I'm curious. What did you think? I didn't think it was a very good film. Well, I'm going to stop you right there. Any listeners that are currently listening, we are going to go into spoilers. So, Did you do this deliberately so you could cut me off? <laughs> It was so well orchestrated, I did not see it coming. If you don't want this movie spoiled for you, maybe skip to the end. Oh, you're a dick. (laughs) So, The Last American Virgin, what was the plot, Jack? Uh, So, (laughs) the plot, if you can call it a plot. Yeah, well, we can. (sighs) So it's, well, it's one high school student, but I guess it sort of focuses on his two friends as well a Mm. fair amount. But it's, he's, like, I don't know, so here's, I'm, I'm going to try and explain the plot. This does lead into the plot. But, like, other films that are sort of this this style, they're like, it's the last years of high school, I've got to get laid sort of thing. They they sort of try and do the, it's the last years of high school, I've got to get laid. But The Last American Virgin doesn't, like, there's no huge point about it where it's like, he's desperate to get a girl. It's just like... I think you get a couple of scenes where he... There's, like, the few scenes where he's trying to get laid. Yeah. And then... But they don't sort of... I don't know. They don't seem to be focusing on it. I know they are, and they're trying to. Here's the thing. He actually does get laid um, in a very 
kind of almost underwhelming Yeah, but not for like manner. half the film. No, so... And before that, you get maybe like one one scene where he's trying to get laid, and even then it's not really him, it's his mates who are sort of orchestrating the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing about The Last American Virgin. It, it doesn't have that like time pressure like certain movies. Um, oh, we have to lose our virginity by prom, or we have to do it bef- on spring break or whatever. There's yeah, but no that's time I, like. I'm not a huge it. fan of those films anyway. Particularly, they're not my genre of choice. Yeah, necessarily. But like, that's not a bad thing. Adding that time pressure because it gives it that urgency. So for him, you're just getting. I have to get laid. Yeah, what what you're and getting, then there's no pressure behind it. It's like no, what oh, you're okay. getting with the Last American Virgin is just a kind of snapshot into your average American teenager's life. I don't think you are. Don't say that, because that's not true. Yeah, that's what you're getting with this movie. No, you aren't. Don't say that, because you don't know that, and I also don't think that's true. I legit, I honestly don't believe that this film is really portraying what it's like to be an American teenager. Well, do you know why you might be feeling that? Why? Because this movie is actually a remake of a series of Israeli movies called the Lemon Popsicle Movies. Okay. And what they basically did is, for some reason, the Lemon Popsicle Movies was quite successful around the world but it didn't really translate to America so they basically picked almost the best bits from each of the movies and now we have The Last American Virgin as a result of that so the point you were making about this being a snapshot into an American teenager's life was wrong well you could also say because it's based on a series of Israeli stories yeah so how I mean how different is America to Israel that's the big question I mean I don't know probably quite different well as a teenager this is the thing about these movies as a teenager just wanting to get laid that's a universal theme we can yeah, all but relate it's never, to that it's never I don't know so my issue with these films is that they make they it's too beleaguered a point it's like so heavily like I get and I was a teenage boy I remember but it's yeah. not like it wasn't every waking minute of my day was me being like man I'm gonna get a prostitute because <laughs> I have to have sex soon like it's so over the top and this film it, it 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 shouldn't have been over the top because the the end of the film is so polar opposite to what these films usually do. Yeah, that's okay. We're we're getting ahead of ourselves here. So, yeah, we are, but it just annoys me. The Last American Virgin. Basically, we get this little glimpse into these three friends, and what is, I guess, the the big event, if you will, the inciting incident is there's a new girl in school, a girl called Karen, and our our main character, a guy called Gary. He very quickly develops a crush on Karen. Now, if this was your typical average movie, you would have an hour of them sort of dancing around each other. Maybe she'd be interested in someone else and he'd be winning her affections. And then by the closing credits, they'd be embracing and kissing each other and everything would be happy, wouldn't it? If this was your average movie. Yeah, but that does happen, Liam, for most of the film. Not quite. No, it does. You just, you said it would be the whole, like, you literally, one of your plot points was she'd fall for someone else, which yeah, is yeah, what the yeah, film is. Yeah, that does happen. But and then he we... tries to win her affection. Yeah, that also happens, but in a very <laughs> bizarre way. No, what, that bit of the film isn't bizarre. Mm, I don't know. Why, why? Wait, okay, so what do you think's bizarre about the way they do it in The Last American Virgin? Um, I think it's bizarre to try and win someone's affection by agreeing to pay for her abortion, which was a result yeah, of Yeah, I said her most of the film was, Yeah, so I said most of the film, up till the ending is the traditional, she's fallen for someone else, he's trying to win her affection. Yeah, but then, okay. You said we weren't talking about the ending, because it was too, you said... I wouldn't say, Mm. in a traditional film, you would have um, the main character, who is the virgin, sleeping with a prostitute and getting crabs. Yeah, but see, I don't think that was the big, like... And admittedly, I guess in those times, I mean, it was probably a big deal, and, like, like, uh, STDs in those times were spreading more, I guess. Well, the 80s, you had the whole AIDS boom. Yeah, yeah, so I guess that was more of a point then. But, like, even in this film, they don't try and make that a huge point. It's not like... No, it's paid for I thought I was like, oh, okay, they're going to get something worse than crabs, and it's going to be a big, like, oh, so maybe that's not what they should do. And it's not. It's literally, like, one scene where they're like, my dick itches, does your dick itch? And then he's like, yeah, mine does. What about David's? And then David's like, yeah, my balls are itching. And then they're all like, oh, we've got crabs. And they just go to a store. I'm sorry, but that scene, so that scene, when that was, was happening, what the important thing you missed out is they're actually taking a test in a class environment where they're supposed to be silent. And I that scene cracked me up. Really? Yeah. The, like, the thing honestly, is, honestly, I think I laughed maybe once in this film. 
Right, and I, even then, I don't think it was a laugh laugh. It was like a... Huh. You see, I have a lot of affection for these coming-of-age movies, especially the more raunchy ones, because I find them very relatable. I feel oh, like... because you were fucking prostitutes. Well, I just... I feel like... With movies like this, we've all been there, okay? So we've all... No, you haven't! No, we've all made a pact to lose our virginity by prom, and we've all I driven didn't. across the country because we accidentally mailed a sex tape to our girlfriend that we were in a long-distance relationship with. I didn't. And we have all promised to bring alcohol to a party where we were underage, and we had to figure out how to do that, and we had to get fake licences. I, and, did, I didn't do that. And we've all had a porn star move in next door when we <laughs> fell in love with her. I didn't like, These that. are themes that I think all of us... <laughs> can Just relate resonate. to on some level <laughs> see but this is the thing right so all those films you were listing there yeah. like they're good comedy films like this 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 storyline mm. the let's lose our virginity storyline yes is a good comedy storyline it is yes this film tried to be a comedy for most of it yeah and then, I, it did make me laugh I honestly didn't see that. I right. honestly, there was how no about, this wasn't a funny film to me how about the scene um, quite early on where they get three women. They take them back to the um, the main character, Gary. His house is, is empty. The parents are out for the night. And they're all trying to get it on with these women. And poor Gary, the virgin, he is lumbered with, let's say... Oh, I don't want to be mean. I don't want yeah, to say... No, see, this is one of my issues with the film. Is that whole scene, right? And again, it's a product of the times and stuff. Yeah. But that scene wouldn't fly as well in a film nowadays. No, so let's because say... Because it's wrong. It's to, not to nice politely, what they're doing. To put it politely... His two friends, both the two fairly attractive women, and Gary gets the less attractive of, of the options. Like, he, he gets the Bulbasaur, while the others get Squirtle and Charmander. Well, that's a ridiculous thing, because Bulbasaur was the best starter from Gen 1. Ridiculous. So. Ridiculous. Bulbasaur was fucking awful. Anyway. Turned into a giant leaf dinosaur. Versus a giant fire dinosaur. Yeah, I'll admit Charizard is the coolest starter. A giant. Go, yes, try and sell me Blastoise. Try and. T- yeah, exactly. Try and sell Blastoise. Turtle. No, everyone thinks Blastoise is cool until they have to explain what he is. A I'm giant sorry. turtle that has water pistols yeah. th- on his shoulders. Hydro That's pump. really shit. Hydro pump is a bitching move. It fires water. Yeah, but it's. That's super like the powerful. least threatening thing. As a kid, I was like, so he's a hose. This is not great. You, what, what, what was Venusaur's big, great he move? He fired sunlight. Focused burning sunlight. <laughs> he was rubbish. Anyway, um, I just love that scene. Um, and it's then not, obviously I, I, the like, parents come home. Now, th- okay, that is something we can relate to, right? Where we've had a girl back at hours, we're trying to get frisky, and then suddenly your parents walk in. No. That's awkward and embarrassing. I mean, I was usually careful with, like, see, this is, I've never understood the whole, like, my parents are out for a night, let's have a party. I had friends that did it, and I yeah. went to those parties. But I did it once in my life. Yeah. And I did it because I hadn't done it before. And my parents were away for a week, I think. Yeah. So I had one night where I had a party. And they came back, walked in, and there were bags of rubbish. And they went, you had a party, didn't you? And I went, yes. And they went, why didn't you just ask us? We would have said yes. And I was like, yeah, I know. Did you get I in did- trouble? Yeah, I got in trouble with my mum. And my dad was like, you should have just said. And I would have been fine with it. And I was like, yeah, I know. But for but, me, it was like, I haven't done it, I'm going to do it. Yeah, and that's the thing. I think doing it illicitly is a bit more exciting. I just did it because, like, it felt like that's the thing to do. Yeah, exactly. And that's 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 what you get with these movies. You, and here's the other thing, right? For those of us who perhaps, when they should have been doing these things, maybe instead they were, I don't know, off the top of my head, in their bedroom playing World of Warcraft... Um, this is Liam, by the way, folks. Well, we're not naming names. I'm just saying some people... I don't want maybe... people to think I'm the stay-at-home World of Warcraft guy. No, but, I mean, someone might have been. Yeah, someone, someone on this podcast like... might have been. Yeah. I wasn't. Instead of the whole going out and partying and stuff, yeah. um, what these movies give you is an opportunity to live vicariously. All right, okay. I get that point. But these films are based in the 1980s. Yeah. When you were a baby... I wasn't like, even born when these films came out. No, that's true. Not when these films came out. No, that's no. Fair. Sometimes I forget that you're not, you know, 80. Exactly. But, so, I don't know. But living equally... vicariously through these films. These films aren't that exciting. Like, I had crazier parties than are in these films. And and I didn't go to crazy parties. Yeah, but that's not kind of... The point isn't how crazy is this party. What I like about it, especially the 80s setting, is I kind of 
just love seeing the snapshots of that time. Because, like, while these are obviously exaggerated to an extent... Um, I'd say quite an extent. Well, Porky's is actually based on the director's life. Right, well, we'll talk about Porky's yeah. later. Um, they are exaggerated to an extent. You know that, you know, in the 80s, these kids were having parties and were trying to get laid and were going to prostitutes and were getting crabs. And, like, the one scene... No, see, that... you say that, go to prostitutes and get crabs. I don't think that many people are going to prostitutes. I mean, it occurs in both the movies... Yeah, like, can't be it happens happening. in quite a few modern films as well, prostitutes, Liam, but I don't think it's a commonplace thing. I don't Maybe think all the high schoolers... No, it's not, Liam. I think it's most people. I think you I start know. to... I think your problem is that you tend to believe that the film universes are based more closely on fact than they really are. Yeah. Yes, I think you find it hard to distinguish reality and fiction. Yeah. Anyway, um, back to the documentary we were discussing. <laughs> One yeah. of the scenes that really stood out, and I was like, right, this this wouldn't happen. I went to an all-boys school, so I'm going to know. It's the scene where they're in the locker room, and they all just yeah. suddenly decide to start measuring each other's dicks. I'm glad you brought that up, because I was, I was <laughs> as soon as that scene, like, because they, yeah, so one of the, like, the nerdy kid. Yeah. He is peeping on the girl's locker room through a little yeah. hole. Yeah. And then all the other lads catch him at it. Yeah. And they're all like, oh, you cheeky, what are you doing? And then he's like, you guys are just jealous that I've, I'm packing heat. Yeah. And then, so then, of course, they do the logical thing, which is they all bet each other who has the bigger penis. Yeah. And then uh, the main character and his tubby friend measure. sit down with a ruler and literally measure all of their friend's penises. Related. And I was like, if anyone had done that in my school, they'd have had the shit kicked out of them. Like, not by me, just by the dickhead kids. Yeah. But the ones that are, like, leading the way seem to be the dickhead kids in that film. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess the thing the thing about that scene as well, which is interesting, is the nerd is the one with the biggest dick, and that's the bit that I most related to. Oh, right, did you? Yeah, obviously. It's cause, um, yes, because when, the, when uh, you were at school, and theoretically at the time when people were measuring penises, you were just me- measuring your ego, and they were like, yep, Liam's got the biggest one. Yeah, I mean, it matches his dick, is what they said. In your head. Mm. Um, one thing I do want to point out. What did you think of Diane Franklin, who played Karen? Yeah, she's pretty attractive. Well, I was watching it with Kat, and every time she came on screen, Kat turned to me and went, I just want to take some tweezers to her eyebrows. I didn't really notice her eyebrows. Her eyebrows were out of control, but she does some nice boobies. And that's another thing that's good about these movies, is you get some good boobies. Yeah, but even, like, I don't know. Even that seems weird. You, you right in the Christmas special you asked for boobies or something there was definitely an episode where you asked for boobies yeah there was definitely an episode where I asked for boobies I didn't ask you for an abortion film that had boobies in it <laughs> but the abortion scene is fantastic right okay so that's my other point is I was hating this film yeah full on hating it but it does make a ballsy choice at the end right which is at the end of the film the girl that he's been trying to get with but his best friend's been wooing he, he wants with. to pop her cherry, basically, doesn't he? Yes, and then yeah. his friend takes her to a uh, stadium and sleeps with her. And then we have the big reveal that she's got pregnant and his friend just leaves her and is like, no, whatever, we've broken up, it doesn't affect me. So he then, instead of going on holiday with all his mates, he sells a bunch of his own shit, pays for her abortion, and I was like, oh, this is this is a ballsy move. They've like They've changed the direction this film's going. Yeah. It's just unfortunate that it happens right at the end. Because that could have been a good film, right? That premise. Like, not a good comedy film, but that could have been a good film. Is like... Like, Juno sort of did it, but without the abortion bits. Yeah. Like, yeah, Juno's a good film where it's, like, about teenage pregnancy and that kind of thing. And this film yeah. made its, like, stand-up, uh, you know, abortion points right at the end. Which seems like such a fucking waste. I time. I liked that though. I I liked that they were like, right, we've all had a laugh. Now let's see what actually happens if you go around putting your dick in places and not wearing protection and stuff. And I I agree. I think it was a ballsy move. But I think what was even ballsier was the ending of the film. Yeah, yeah. So after this kid has put all his money towards helping this woman, or helping this girl get an abortion, she then goes back to the the friend who knocked her up. And basically leaves our main character in his car driving, crying as the credits roll. Yeah. Now, when I first saw that, I burst out laughing. 
because I just could not believe the audacity of the movie. Yeah, yeah, I guess. I loved it. I thought it was. Yeah, no, it's it's amazing. a really good ending, but it's not a good ending to that film. I loved it. And it's also, a really good ending, and it's really it's the kind of thing that I like seeing in a film. I like when a film does that. That whole like, oh look, your character didn't get a happy ending, but that film didn't set itself up in the right way to be that movie. It felt like the director just grasping, or I guess not the director because it was based on other stories. Mm. I, it feels like whoever was making those stories was just grasping at straws at the end and was like what's the most shocking thing I could do abortion what else is shocking they're not happy it feels too like desperate to be as that film I liked it um I also and I, one of the things I've, I've learned about my movie tastes as the years have gone on if a movie has a really really good soundtrack I'm a lot more forgiving of any of its flaws and The Last American Virgin 100% delivers on the soundtrack it has a good soundtrack but I didn't like I, I don't know. I didn't notice it in the same way that you did, I don't think. That's surprising, because it stands out to me as one of the, like, real selling features of the movie. It ha- yeah, but it, like, it has really good songs, but, like, I didn't... It's, it didn't hit me in the way that, like, Drive hit me with its soundtrack. Yeah, and Drive is the other one with an amazing soundtrack. Um, yeah. I think that's because it's very different, whereas... Oh, yeah, no, what... they're, like, totally different films. It's, I'm not comparing them in well, that no, way. But, and... No, but I mean, is it's the soundtrack to Drive is very different as well, because the soundtrack had this weird, like, 80s synth vibe but it was all quite modern music whereas The Last American Virgin it is just great 80s songs but it it doesn't feel out of place yeah so after this movie does it surprise you to learn that none of the actors really achieved anything because I I thought not shocking at all I thought the acting was pretty good Um, really yeah the main guy it's not that good the main guy the only other thing he did of note was he appeared in Friday the 13th for the final chapter as just one of the teens that gets killed <laughs> like the acting's not great in it like but to be fair like when i see i don't know how old they were in that film that's another thing that because they, they're clearly they're 18 because you see boobs yeah one thing that i thought was good though is apart from rick like the the, the friend that looks a bit like patrick swayze i felt that the majority of the cast all looked like they didn't look like movie stars they no, they, don't, like, they look like you'd expect a high school group to look like. Exactly. And I, I actually kind of thought that was quite... An, again, it was one of the things that I liked about the movie. I liked that you could believe that these were gawky high schoolers. Yeah, but see, I could from the from like a look at them. Yeah. I just honestly don't think they were relatable in the way that a high school comedy movie or whatever it is, I don't know what they try and claim their genre is. I think it's a, I'd, I'd say it's a sex comedy. See, like, I don't think they're endearing in the way that usual sex comedy characters are. No, I, I, I don't know. I honestly, I honestly, uh, like, I honestly didn't come out of that that film thinking I love these people. Like, no, each of I'm the so characters. I'm sorry for Gary. Every single one of the characters does something that makes them a massive dickhead. Um, but again, that's what I like about it because that is very true to what it's like to be a teenager. As a teenager, you're not endearing. There is no endearing teenager. You're always going to be some sort of weird, self-centred dickhead. Yeah, I don't... But not to the extent that these people are. I wouldn't say that as a massive extent. I'd say... They literally have a scene where the main character gets so so drunk, he then goes, I'm going to drive home, and his one of his best friends doesn't say to him, don't be a twat, I'll drive you home. He goes, are you sure you don't want me to drive you home? And the guy can barely walk, and he's like, yeah. no, I'll drive. And then his friend goes... Okay, and just leaves. And then that's not even a fucking point of the movie. No well, one there's goes. No there's no bad. To that. It just he gets home. Yeah. I was like, what a terrible friend. What a terrible message. This movie that then goes, oh, if you have unprotected sex, that that can end in horrible things happening to you. Also goes, oh, but don't worry, <laughs> drive drunk. And driving. That's fine. But yeah, again, it's... was it such a a touchy subject at, at that time? I don't know, mate. But. See, the thing is, I get the whole, this was made in the 80s, right? But I'm yeah. seeing it for my first time now. Yeah. I can't, and like, if you watch a film for the first time after it came out, you can't just put a filter on and go, but if it was the 80s, I'm sure I'd think this way. Like, No, of course, but... but and I don't. I honestly didn't, I honestly didn't like this film. I don't think it made good points. That's fair enough, but I, I to just, you know, counteract your point you just made, I feel like it is possible to watch a movie and go, oh, okay, so it is of that time. So it can be considered with the with certain constraints of that time. I'd also I also think drink driving probably was a fairly big deal in the eighties. The eighties is not that long ago. It was well, a big deal in the nineties. 
I and feel that's like, ten years apart. I feel like because both this and Porky's does a little bit of drink driving as well. When does Porky's have a drink? I don't know. Driving? I might just delete that point. I think it was bad. Yeah, it was. I'm, I'm, I'm more thinking of when he gets beaten up. He's just acting like yeah, he's drunk. yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, so, no, I think he does drink drive then. But yeah, I get what you're saying. So that was the last American Virgin. Now I also recommended we watch Porky's. Yeah. Can you see why I recommended the two together? Yes. I my biggest issue is that you didn't re- you didn't suggest Porky's be the film we watch, and then the, compare it to the Last American Virgin. The thing is, Porky's is the more accessible, the more popular option. I want more people to see the Last American Virgin because while I understand you didn't like it, it is a movie that I do truly love. It's, I honestly wouldn't recommend it to anyone. I obviously would because I did. You did. Um, for me, Porky's is marginally better, but I think Porky's is more accessible. So that's why, and it's it's also funnier. Porky is. It doesn't yeah. try to hit you at the end like the Last American Virgin does. I think you're giving the Last American Virgin too much credit. Seriously, I, I think you're I looking really at it like through it. rose-coloured glasses, and you're saying like, you, I, I honestly think you're overestimating what they were trying to do. I don't think they made a film, and the whole time they were like, this is going to be a big sudden twist. No, but proves every- like the I don't film think... wasn't trying to make that point. Yeah, just, they were like, "This would be a good ending." I don't think that was necessarily what they were trying to do. But what I think is, what they did, they did well. And I think having that ending to me is way more relatable than the ending of Porky's. Yeah. Oh no, one hundred percent. And that's what I like about it. What I like is but Porky's is the better film, and I preferred See, Porky's ending. In a way, the Last American Virgin it starts off as this. Um, what you would expect from this sort of um, sex comedy Hollywood that's all dick around and have laughs and then as it kind of progresses and as you get to know these characters better it starts taking away the kind of film fantasy elements to it and it's like right let's just think of these as actually real characters this is what would probably happen if this wasn't a movie and that's what I like about it no I disagree well that's your decision yep so Porky's um, Porky's Quick plot synopsis. A uh, bunch of high school kids decide that they have to... Or one of them specifically is still a virgin, insists he isn't, but really wants to have sex. They eventually decide to go to a known brothel in another state called Porky's, run by a man called Porky. Uh, they get tricked there. The man takes their money, doesn't let them sleep with anyone. Then one of the kids goes on a vendetta with him. The other kids are still trying to get laid. And eventually they get revenge on Porky. Yeah, in, in what they describe as a prank, but is actually, like, several criminal acts. Oh, 100%. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty positive people died in that end scene. Yeah. Just don't tell us. Quite possibly. But yeah, Quite like, possibly. Porky's is the more classic uh, high school teens trying to lose their virginity, right? Yeah. That's, or, like, especially of that time. So what I think is interesting as well is Porky's got a wide release in March of 1982... The Last American Virgin, July of the same year. Yeah. And what was my point? I don't know. What I like is is they're kind of they're 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 kind of the same story in a way. Uh, if you sort boil it down to, oh, I just want to get laid. But with Porky's, you have the more Hollywood. Let's make a big laugh out of it. And with the Last American Virgin, you have more of a this is what could potentially happen in that scenario. I mean, I think if you put Porky's outside of a movie scenario. It would not end that way. Yeah, but Porky's is a comedy. Porky's accepts yeah. it as a comedy and goes, cool, we're going to be a comedy. Yeah. So, what were your favourite scenes in Porky's? Uh, I don't know about specific scenes. I really liked the scenes with Brian, who is the Jewish boy that turns up at the school. Yeah. He, he seems to just appear halfway through the movie. Yeah, he sort of rocks up in a gym class. Yeah, and then they're just like, well, you're one of us now, I guess. Uh, yeah, And yeah. he's just there for the rest, but it's... Yeah, he's not really... He just suddenly appears. It's very yeah. odd. But yeah, no, I liked, I liked his scenes but just because he seemed like a nice guy. Yeah. There's, there's a huge cast in Porky's. Like, the there are. There's group a group of guys, of I think, is like eight or something. Yeah. But yeah, no, I like. I don't know. Like, scenes to me w- wasn't a big thing. Like, there weren't... There were a couple of scenes that I was like, that's funny or whatever. I love it's the more scene. like characters and stuff. I love the scene where they're spying on the girls in the, in the showers. Yeah. And um, one of them says... Have you ever seen that much wool? You could knit a sweater. Yes, yeah. And then, right, this this character puts his willy through one of the holes because he thinks that the girls are interested. 
but actually it's this like hench butch lady coach and she grabs his penis and doesn't let go and that got me thinking jack where's the strangest place you've ever put your penis right nowhere what i haven't done anything like that why would anyone do anything like that see this again this again liam is one of the things where i'm like liam's view of reality and fiction is wrong because it is your reality but it's your reality because you've seen shit like this and you're like that's a good idea yeah no, I've never like put my hole, put my, put my dick through a hole in a wall or anything. You've never put your hole through your dick. <laughs> no, that sounds like a terrible idea. It does. Um, like I wouldn't say I put mine in anywhere particularly weird. Uh, I think. Well, a then sock, why the fuck did you ask? I think a sock is the weirdest. And that's um, like fairly common, isn't it? I've not done that, but I I didn't like it. I'm going to be honest with you. Like I I don't know if I want to have this conversation with you. It was it was a necessity. Um, basically, it was when I was at uni. Um, and I was out of tissues. And I, I'm not an animal. I can't just, you know, I, I like to consider where I'm gonna deposit. I can't just chuck it on the floor or something. And I thought, well, I've got no tissues. I've got a sock here. That's the thing that I, I guess people do. It, it's, it seems to be mentioned a lot in movies and whatnot. So I strapped the sock over my dick and just instantly killed the mood. There is nothing arousing about having a sock on the end of your penis. I'm really sorry for this, listeners. I really wish this wasn't happening, but it is. What? The film Porkies. No, so, so you've got to have somewhere where you put it, though, at some point in your life. No, I honestly haven't. I don't know what point you're trying to make. You, It's one of your things where you assume other people have done as weird shit as you. And I they hope. Haven't. I don't assume, I hope. Yeah, I know. That's I don't why want to upset, be alone. It upsets it. me when you bring these up, and I'm like, oh, I can't help him on this one, because it's just him. Yeah, maybe... It's maybe the desperation I'm... of you being like, you must have done it somewhere, and I'm like, no, honestly, Liam, <laughs> I haven't. Maybe you could... And Just to make you feel about better it in a future episode. Okay, thank you. That's I'll put my challenge. dick in a plug or something. In a what? Plugs? Not a plug socket. A plug hole in like a. What about shower. a pie? No, I don't think people really do that. I don't, to be honest. Um, now I think now it sounds like you do do it. Watermelon, maybe people do. Yeah, but why? None of it sounds appealing. Well, it's meant to feel good. I don't. I'm not having this conversation with you. I don't need to know if you're going to fuck a watermelon. Oh, I'm not. I have no interest in that. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if I trust you. No, I'm pretty good at masturbation. Like I've got it down, so I don't need to like. Can we please talk about Porky's? Yeah. Like you derailed this subject, and I actually wanted to talk about this film. Did you notice Kim Cattrall was in it? Who made her name in Sex and the City? No, who's she? She was the uh, like the the hot ish lady coach, the one who was nicknamed yeah. Lassie. Yeah. 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 Yeah, she she sort of made her name in Sex and the City, but oh, kind okay. of, you see her naked in this. So for any fans of Sex and the City, if you wondered what she looked like, younger and hotter and nakeder, you find out in Porky's. Yeah, she's pretty hot in Porky's. Yeah, I also really like Wendy in Porky's. Like she's yeah. not traditionally attractive, but yeah, she is. Would you say so? Yeah. Okay then. What do you mean? But I don't think you can say phrases like traditionally attractive. Because that doesn't mean anything. Well, it does. It's no, it doesn't. It like doesn't. Kaylee Kuko just... is traditionally attractive. Yeah, no, she. No, but see, it's too broad a statement to say someone's not traditionally attractive. Yeah, it is. No, because because attraction is based on your opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An opinion. Oh my god, as subjective. <laughs> this week, you're you're a nightmare. <laughs> what do you mean? Like usually, I can have reasonable discussions with you. <laughs> this week, it feels like you're just. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you want me to talk about porkies? I don't know anymore. Meat, right? You liked meat, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't mean it to come I like meat. <laughs> right. Um, fun fact for you. Yeah. He is in another movie called The Wanderers, which is... Um, I've heard of it. It's really good. Um, I might actually add it to my little spreadsheet of things to okay. watch one day. Again, it's another coming of age, but it's not a sex comedy come of age. It's it's more uh, to do with, like, uh, gangs. Okay. So it's a bit more serious. Um, and I think it's set in the 50s or 60s. Oh, fair enough. Uh, but yeah, he's he's really good in in that, and that's where I first saw him. So then when I watched Porky's and saw him appear, I was like, oh, I know that guy. I, I was like happy to see him again. Well, fair enough. I was like, you know, reuniting with an old friend. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, just go with it. You and you and me, best buddies. Well, you know, sometimes. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know anymore, Liam. I don't know. No, uh, you were saying how much you liked Porky's. That's just not how much I liked it. I just liked it more than The Last American Virgin. Yeah, yeah. So how how do these 80s sex comedies compare to more recent ones like um, Superbad 
for example. I mean, I prefer the newer ones, but like, it's not my favourite genre anyway. No, but so I, like, I don't particularly get. I usually I tend not to particularly empathise with the characters in it because usually that? it's deliberately they're being dicks. Like, it's doing that whole like you were saying earlier. That whole like when you're a teenager, you're not meant to be, you know, likable. Everyone's favourite person. Yeah, but like, I don't know. I, when I watch a film or like read a story or whatever. I like to empathise with the main character. Okay. So a lot of it is just that I just don't get what their big deal is. And like, there struggle, are characters in Porky's that I did like. Do you struggle to um, kind of like characters when they are... So, for example... Just um, if they... No, so if they make decisions that I don't... That I'm like, that's clearly a bad thing to do. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes these characters, like the, especially the, the more over the top dickhead characters are tend, tend to be the ones that people like a lot so oh yeah no so like the the ones I liked the most in Porky's were probably like Pee Wee's up there and he's yeah. a dickhead L- less so no he's a dickhead Why? he's the friend he's the friend that they have round because they're like it's hilarious when Pee Wee fucks up yeah but that doesn't make him a dickhead that just makes him a bit of a klutz no he's also a dickhead he's like obsessed with sex and pesters women yeah but they all do yeah that's not okay Liam no, Hi, no. Liam. Hey, this is the modern day, Liam. That's not okay anymore. No, I know, but I'm just saying, for this movie to work, they kind of have to. Otherwise, yeah. It no, just I'm not saying I'm not weird. saying they shouldn't be dickheads. I'm just saying they are dickheads. No, but what I'm so what I'm guess I'm asking is like the Stifler character in American Pie, for example. Yeah, a lot of people like him because of what a dickhead he is, and I think a lot of it is is people almost wish that they could get away with being as big of a dickhead without any repercussions. I don't think I don't think that's what it is. Or they just find him funny for whatever yeah, reason. Yeah, I think I think that's what it what it but is. is people what I'm find asking the stuff is, they do funny. You who who needs to empathise with someone, can you still like the dickhead characters? No, or... yeah. So so I'm not saying I don't like, so, right. So I'm not saying that I only like characters I empathise with. Okay. I like to have a character that I can empathise with. Okay. So what Porky's does is yeah. a fair few of the characters have moments where you're like, oh, I get what that character's doing, right? Yeah, I'd say so most I have their, like, like I empathise with. Uh, like you can empathise with the guy that's getting beat by his dad because you're like yep. I get that that's horrible I see why he's being a dick yes. you empathise with Brian because you're like I get why a kid would be trying to make friends in this new school yep. and would have to push through I get that, I get that it must be horrible for him to have been bullied like because he says he had to learn to fight because yeah. if you're Jewish you either know how to fight or you get beaten up effectively yes right so th- I like that kind of empathy but you can also like characters that aren't like so Pee Wee you don't empathise with Pee Wee particularly Okay. He doesn't have like a an over like he doesn't have a reason. He's like, but he's a good character because he's funny. Yeah, I like that. The, the very first time you see Pee Wee, he's lying in bed. He's got his morning glory going on. He gets awoken. He measures himself, and he goes, yeah. "Oh man, it's getting smaller." Yes, yeah, yeah. Like Pee Wee's a good character, and I liked him, but he's yeah. not. Yeah, he's just not. He's not empathetic. Is and what I think right? they do well in Porky's is you have a villain like Porky yes. is a great villain for the characters to kind of uh, rally against. Yeah, yeah. And they make him bad enough that you're against him too. Oh yeah, the fact that he will like happily beat up a teenager. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Like, to the point of hospitalisation. I think at one point he, they say that he kind of breaks someone's ribs and maybe collapses yes, yeah, a lung. Yeah, that's, that's the like, the uh, turning point of when they decide to get revenge. Yeah. But no, but I, yeah, think, so th- I, yeah, I, I I agree. Porky's is, for me, Porky's is marginally better. Um, I just... What I like about it is, I think some comedies, they're almost they're aware that they're a comedy, so they don't like to show the characters laughing. Like they they try to play off the jokes, not necessarily as jokes, so characters right, yeah, yeah. won't laugh. Like it's one of the things that How I Met Your Mother did differently, but did well is when someone made a joke, the other characters could laugh at it. Whereas if yeah. you look at something like Friends, someone will make a, a one liner joke, but no one else will laugh or whatever. They'll just kind of carry on with the scene. Yeah, and what I like with Porky's is there are just entire scenes where the whole cast are laughing. Yeah, uh, yeah, the coaches and <laughs> Miss What's Her Face. That is, yeah, yeah. Th- there's loads of scenes, and it's one of the things that I really noticed watching it this time. Is I think it's a great way of getting you kind of almost. This is going to sound weird, but it almost feeling like you are part of that group because you're kind of laughing along with them. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that empathy thing I was talking about. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm glad we agree. Yeah. So, what would you give The Last American Virgin out of five? Uh, two. Okay, that's and higher than I was expecting. 
I mean, that's like I'm try. I'm still. I'm. It's either a one or a two. So I guess maybe a one point five, but I'm not sure. So okay. I'll give it a two just based on the unsurety. Okay, for me, it's a four, which I find insane. But I uh, see. Th- this is. Oh, we forgot. Hang on. This is why I'm kind of disappointed that none of our listeners actually got in touch with us about <laughs> it. But yeah. we did get did. no. One of our listeners did get in contact with us. Would you like to read that out? Yeah. Cat sent us an email. And this is only because I made her watch the movie with me. Yep. Third wheel cat. I say that, but I might be the third wheel. We're still not sure. So Cat says, The soundtrack was amazing, but the film wasn't as funny as it wanted to be at times and was quite predictable sometimes, whilst entirely unrealistic other times. Saying that, I did enjoy it to an extent. 2.5 out of 5. Average. So, so yeah, I mean, if, if I hadn't made her watch it, she wouldn't have wrote in and I, I kind of I agree with, with her points um, yeah that's the last American Virgin by the way I yeah think yeah, uh, yeah she didn't watch Porky's um, but I do wish that more of our listeners had got involved because just f- from a very selfish personal thing I wanted to find out what other people thought of this movie yeah I get that just as a fair you know warning to our listeners I don't care if you watch it I don't think you should so yeah whereas I do for me like, watch it's a Porky's, four out in my five. opinion go watch Porky's if you want that kind of film if not don't worry about it so what would you give Porky's out of 5 uh, a 3 if I'm giving Last American Virgin a 2 then Porky's yep. is a 3 okay again Porky's for me is it is marginally better it's a 4 out of 5 but as we already said it's a lot more accessible and I'm way more curious of how people respond to The Last American Virgin now the other issue is that what I don't want is someone who hasn't watched it but has listened to all of this to then go and watch it knowing how it ends I don't care what you think of it if you've done that. I wanted you to watch it not knowing so I could have found out then but you've lost that opportunity now. Who are you talking to? Our listeners. Right. Again, listeners, just don't watch it. I'm livid at them. <laughs> Liam's angry this week. I really... No, no, they had such a good opportunity to interact. Don't and get annoyed often, at our listeners. No, but it's not often I actually care what they think. Whereas this week... Jesus Christ. This week, you I wanted, really wanted I to know. When we started this, you were like... Yeah, I'll, I hate the fact that, that you're always trying to get the listeners on side. And I was like, I'm not trying to get them on side, Liam. I feel like you just naturally are anti the listeners. This week I am, I'm going to be honest. You always seem to be. No, no, just this week. You get angry at this fictitious listener you have in your head that always disobeys you. It's all of them. It's not, though. It is. But it's, like, none it's, of this has happened. No, it's all of the listeners, right? What I'm angry at is all of the listeners that listened to last week's episode found out that we were going to watch The Last American Virgin this week and didn't bother watching it, and didn't bother writing in, and I'm even more angry at those ones that have now listened to this episode after not doing all of that, No, and have no, listened to the spoilers. No, because sometimes people aren't... I don't think... I think... I feel like this, again, comes from the fact that I, in you know our real life, listen to more podcasts than you, and I speak to a lot of my friends who do listen to podcasts, but... I think a lot of people listen to this kind of thing because they're just interested in our views, not necessarily the content we're talking about. Like, this gives people a snap. Even if they haven't watched Porky's or The Last American Virgin, we sort of, not sum it up, but, you know, we give a brief synopsis of what it is and then we have discussion about what we want to discuss, right? Yeah. So I feel like the listeners that aren't watching Porky's and, and The Last American Virgin, they're not doing it to spite you. They're not going, I'm not going to watch it and then I'm going to no, listen. No, I'm just livid they're, at them. They're fi- no, why? It doesn't because, matter. Because, here's then the they're listening to our opinions on these topics. No, yeah, but, but, right... What they've done is, if they've listened to this episode, I am particularly livid because they have spoiled that movie for them now. And now, but they would never now watch that it they know how shit. it ends, I don't care what they think about it. So if they were to listen to this episode and then go off and watch it and then write in, I don't care. Listeners, I'm not mental like Liam, so you guys do what you want. I'm just glad you listened to this podcast. I'm. I guess I'm not. Maybe I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. Again, don't worry about Liam. He's insane. I'm disappointed. They had a good opportunity to get involved. This is the man. The man that is currently judging you is the man that spent ages last week talking about his balls. (laughs) Yeah. What's worse, me talking about them or you guys listening about it? You talking about it? I don't know. I think anyone that just sits there and thinks, you know what, I'm going to listen to all 15 minutes of this has an issue. (laughs) Stop judging our listeners. What is your problem? No, I love our listeners most of the time. Oh, do do you? They really (laughs) let me down this week. They really let me down. Oh my god. What if they just didn't write in? What if they did watch it? Then what was the point? Because they still in. get to listen to this. They just don't have to, like. Just write in. It's no, not. No, don't big worry ask. about it, listeners. 
write in when you feel like writing in. That'd be never. We done? Anything else? Yeah, I have a question for you, Liam. Yeah, go on then. What are we doing next week? Or next time? Right. Next time, we are going to be doing Daredevil Season 2. The whole season. It's, yeah. it's going to be crazy. Normally we just do three episodes. But we're going to do all of them. So, Woo! it comes out. It'll be out by the time you listen to this, most likely. Yeah. So then you so, guys have got two weeks. We'll have one. Yeah. But if you want to interact, you'll have one week as well. And do you know what? That's true. It wouldn't fucking hurt you to write in once in a Jesus while, would it? Jesus Christ. Could you stop berating the listeners? Jack. Maybe they don't know how they can get involved. Maybe you should tell them. Well, if you want to contact us, you can tweet us at nerd or nerd, or you can email us at nerd or nerdpod at gmail dot com. No excuses now. <laughs> Wrap it up. Yeah, outro. Yep. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Nerd or Nerd. I just did all the contact stuff, so I'm not going to do it this time. But I will say, if you want to, you know, actually review us on iTunes, you can. Why bother? They won't. They will. Stop They're being They're not negative. even writing in. Why would they review us on iTunes? I haven't actually checked though, so I don't actually know if anyone has. If you have, and we just haven't noticed, we love you. I can tell you now they haven't. <laughs> I'm Jack Kempster. I'm Liam Underwood. Bye. Bye.